Hello and welcome to The Cellar Door. I'm George and I am here at Federal Woolen Mills, or Fed Mills for short, about to meet Derv, founder of Anther Gin, and taste some of her delicious beverages. Let's go. History is a key ingredient here at Anther Gin, an award-winning distillery situated on the Geelong waterfront. From the building to the brand to the shared story of the people who built it all, the history of Anther Gin is long and rich. I can't wait to sit down with co-founder Derv McGowan to hear all about it over a drink. Or two. Or three. We're very fortunate to be in this building, we feel. It's an amazing oh, space. It's so beautiful. It's uh, 105 years th this year. So it was built in, well, it was opened in 1915. It was one of the first times that they built a factory with ventilation and, and daylight in mind. So it was cutting edge at the time yeah. when it was built. This particular room and the one next door at the back there were both used as the, the boiler house. So we had electricity being produced by coal. Um, in this building and we've got a massive chimney stack at the end of this building which I love. Yeah, it's spectacular. Yeah, it's so gorgeous um, and it's a really good marker, like site marker, so if you come down you just follow the chimney to, to the distillery. Mm. When we originally saw this site, the landlord, he said to me, I need to show you a building but it's leased. And we came down and he showed us this building and I was... I immediately it's a fell bit in mean. love. I was, well, I think he was just going, I, I would love to have you here, but we can't because we've already committed. We were just gutted because we, we fell in love immediately. It was clearly crying out for a distillery to be placed in here. <laughs> and um, we kept looking for other sites afterwards because we couldn't have this one. But every time we saw a site, Seb and I would. Seb, who's my husband and my business partner, um, we'd turn to one another and we'd say, there isn't a chimney on this site. So then we started looking for <laughs> chimneys and none of the chimneys, other chimneys were suitable. <laughs> you were basically just looking for we this We were just looking for this again. exact building, yeah. And six months later, Cam emailed us and said, would you, the, the lease has fallen through, would you like the spot? And of course we said, yes, mm. absolutely. And so that was sort of how it all began. Mm. And here you are. So your background, is quite interesting though. You, yeah. you do have a history with gin, but you also have a history with microbiology. That's right. So I started my liquor journey at university. So I started working in nightclubs here. <laughs> I mean, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? Uh, so I started working in nightclubs in Geelong and I met Sebastian at university. So I took a little break uh -huh. and went and worked in London in cocktail bars in London. <laughs> uh, Seb was there as well. Uh, we worked with Dick Bradsall, who was the father of the 90s, early 2000 um, cocktail renaissance. So we were really lucky to be part of that. It was a very, very vivid time <laughs> in <laughs> Not London. Not just the colour of the liqueurs. No. <laughs> Extraordinary drinks and lots of fun. And then I felt the call back to science um, and we came back and Seb got a job at various places, worked at Gin Palace, Supper Club, mm -hmm. sort of all those iconic venues. Uh, and in the meantime, you are becoming a doctor. During that period of time, we also opened a bar called 1806 in, in Melbourne. Oh, sure. Yeah, and while all of that was going on in Seb's career, I was doing a PhD. And, uh, and opening a bar. I helped a little bit with the bar, but I just said to him, oh, I'm doing a PhD, I'm, I'm a busy. bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I worked on human pathogens, so bacteria, human pathogens. And I got to the end of my PhD at a similar time that Seb got to the point in his career where we were both not sure whether we wanted to continue on that path. And then an opportunity came up for Seb to go and be a distiller um, at the Craft & Co in Collingwood. 
and um, he'd never distilled before and I'd done a little bit of distillation in chemistry at, at uni. Yeah. You know, that's sort of enough. It's science. We, yeah, we can just read the manual. Um, but we sort of worked it out together how to, to make gin. And so did you have mentors during this time or was it all sort of, you just kind of taught yourselves? We had, we did have a lot of um, support from CAM at Four Pillars. So Four Pillars have been very supportive to the whole industry and I feel mm. set the tone for the whole industry because Cam's got a, a background in winemaking and winemakers tend to help one another out during vintage. So he's sort of brought that attitude to to gin and, and the whole uh, industry has sort of followed suit. The friendly team at Anther have set up their customary tasting table for me and Derv is about to talk me through the different gins and their unique flavours. When we were designing this we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, ways to break down the, the gin itself mm -hmm. so that people will be able to pull, pluck sort of uh, smells and tastes out of the gin mm. easily. And the best way to do that is to prime your palate. So for example here, this big glorious bowl here is juniper berries, just to sort of so you can see them in, in sort of bulk. <laughs> but we have them also on our little tasting plate. And what we do encourage people to do is when we're doing our tasting is to have a little taste of the gin and then we'll get them to pick a juniper berry up and smell it mm -hmm. and then smell the gin again and then you're pick primed to taste that note. Because spirits can be, they can hold the, they can hold the flavour and the um, smell quite tightly because it's a high ABV um, and you, some, you sometimes need a little bit of help um, to, to find those flavours. So mm -hmm. yeah, so we, will we get into the tasting Shall we? maybe? Let's. So the first one we've got is your... It's our flagship gin, flagship gin Anther yes. Australian Dry. Which um, is the award winner. This is the award winner. This is the one that won the trophy for Champion Gin in 2018. So we started playing around with flavours in 2015, 2016. Most of the gins on the market were quite restrained because the craft market was start, just beginning, was burgeoning market. And I think the market was after sort of a more introductory sort of flavour, so people are coming back to gin for the first time in a while. But of course, we're seasoned gin drinkers, so we wanted a big, hefty gin, mm. so lots of juniper, lots of citrus and spices. Um, we also wanted that gin to stand up well in Savoy cocktails, so the Prohibition mm -hmm. style cocktails and Savoy cocktails um, of the turn of the century, so things like Negronis, White Ladies. So when we made this, we put in bucket loads, literally bucket loads of juniper into the distillation process. And when you pick up the gin and have a smell, it's very much a gin. Like mm. you can smell, there's lots of, and sort of a soft sort of smell yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And that's because of the oils in the gin. So we, because we have so much juniper in there, oh, sure. the oils come out and it, it softens everything. So mm. you can smell that. Now take one of the juniper berries here and just crush that up. So you'll, you'll be pulling the juniper oil, just break it open and just have a smell. Just sort of get those oils out. Well, it's a different, quite a different scent. Mm. But you can smell there's a sort of a pininess. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, that oil, you can feel that oil. Yeah, the oil's coming out. So it's, you sort of have to work it out a little bit. Oh yeah. And you can smell that gin, that gin smell, but it's a much, this is a very sort of, you can smell that that's not all that's going on in the gin. There's much more going on. So there's some of the other. So you can sort of now, you smell juniper if you smell your gin again. You can smell where the juniper is in that. Mm -hmm. And it sort of primes your nose for that. And so that's what we sort of try to bring to our gin tastings, is mm -hmm. that sort of evo evocative sort of flavour and uh, sensation of the gin. So this is 44%. Mm -hmm. um, when you taste this, you'll juniper and citrus up front. We've got a very spicy mid palate as in, not as in hot spice, but ginger, um, cloves, those sorts of like wintry spices. Mm -hmm. And that serves to um, balance the gin. And then we have a nice bitter finish, which I love. I love, I'm a Negroni lover, yes. so I love yeah. a little bit of bitterness. <laughs> yeah. So Seb and I often, when we make this gin, the bitterness comes in at the very end of gin, the gin distillation. And we used to sort of almost fight over when we were going to cut it. And he'd be like, it's time now. And I'm like, no, it's not. A and a little bit more. And he's like, no, now, now. I'm like, no, don't touch it. So it would be like, it's at the still. And eventually I would have to concede. Anyway, so back to the gin. Yes. So have a little taste. And then mm. breathe out. And in. 
you'll be able to get those flavours. The bitterness will come in Whoa. over the top. Yeah, it's really cool. I yeah. love the tank. I feel like it's kind of <laughs> like unpacking. Yeah, yeah. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back with more history and more gin after the break. I asked Derv where the name Antha came from and found out it's a nod to the incredible botanicals that give the gin its delicious flavour. The name is Antha is uh, part of the flower that holds the pollen and without your reproductive system in your flowers you don't have botanicals so it's a little sort of you know ode to, to the botanicals that we put in our gin. So the natives, Australian natives botanicals are so phenomenally beautiful mm. and unusual. They're as, as weird and wonderful as our fauna. So just to give you an idea of the abundance we have here in Europe, there's about 1,400 botanicals, whereas in Australia we have 22,000 botanicals that we can use to eat or to use in gins. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate here. There's a huge uh, uh, bounty of amazing things here. Um, of course, um, Aboriginal culture has known about this for eons, and we're only starting to actually appreciate it. And I feel also that uh, Australia is starting to become a little bit prouder of what we have here. Mm. I feel like gin is a really great way to introduce people to Australians mm. sort of bounty. I agree. Mm. We have an open recipe. Anyone can come and look at our recipe. We regularly put our whole recipe of in bowls on the table so you can see every single one of our botanicals and taste them and touch them. People must enjoy that a lot like yeah. non-distillers I mean just sort of. It's know. so fun and it's part of what we do here. We want to open the world up of of how to taste gin in a very gentle way. Yeah. So there's a lot of, I think, you know, some industries you, you tend to get a little bit of exclusion because a bit I know more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we don't like that. And you also get people involved in uh, processing, I guess, the the uh, ingredients for you. Yes, like we do. Your cherry day. Yeah. So we have it one or two. It's going to be this year. Two days every year. Um, where we make our cherry gin. Mm. So basically our cherry gin is cherries and gin together. We get a lot of anther gin, which is our flagship gin. We put that in a large tank um, and then we invite people to come down and volunteer for the day and we pit as many cherries as we need. So we're looking at uh, about 600 kilos of cherries to be hand pitted this year. Once the cherry gin is made for the, the year, which is usually, um, it, it's released around March, all of the, the volunteers get a bottle of cherry gin as well. Oh, lovely. But we just have so much fun on the day. And we also have to put plastic down. And so every, yeah. so we use these sorts of tables. So it's, stainless tables with plastic on the ground so it all looks a little bit black clothes <laughs> well sometimes sometimes people wear light clothes so that they can take photographs of themselves <laughs> in, but it looks like after we're finished it actually looks there's red juice everywhere <laughs> there's these like hand pitting tools everywhere so it looks like something awful has happened in here um which is something incredible it's something has incredible happened. has happened should we try the cherry gin yes let's mm. do that there's two very amazing things about this gin. One of them is that, isn't it stunning? Um, it ages in the glass. Ah. So at the start of the year, it's really fruity um, and lots of gin. So it's sort of a really bright, sort of, sort of light fortified. And as the year progresses, it becomes earthier, more tannic in the bottle. So it's, a, it's like a rapid aging over the year. And then when you have a little taste, It's 30% alcohol, so it's very easy to drink. Mm. It tastes like a fortified wine, and it's sweet. You get a, like that last little sort of sweet note yeah, at yeah. the end. This <laughs> gin is delicious. I wouldn't mind trying a couple of your other gins. Excellent. And so the next one is the Anther Goddess Strength. So this is for us a little homage to women in science and women in history. So. Um, what we've done with our logo for this one is we've hidden the logo because uh, a lot of women's success in history was written out by the men mm -hmm. and that's just what happened. Um, one example is uh, Rosalind Franklin who was not included in the Nobel Prize for um, the discovery of DNA and without her research we wouldn't have 
that Watson and Crick wouldn't have been able to understand the problem that they had, which was the DNA that model that they were making was in the wrong orientation. So as a feminist gin. Feminist gin, 100%. Great. So we've got things in there like Damiana, which is an aphrodisiac. We've also got uh, sarsaparilla, which have estrogenoids. So we've got maple syrup in there and honey. Um, mm. And that just makes it amazing. So is it a sweeter kind of well, palette? It's, have a taste. Mm. It's, okay. it's quite, <laughs> it's a big palette, but it is, it's, it's, you've got to think of it, it's 58%. It's a Navy Strength Gin. Yes. Um, the Navy Strength Gin is 58% because in the Navy, um, they needed to give their gin rations or rum rations out. Um, and if you were having that below decks with the cannons, if you spilled your rum on the cannon, you need to be able to light that. So this is flammable. <laughs> flammable feminist gin. Flammable feminist gin. <laughs> Flaming feminism? That's my kind of flavour. Again, this one is going to hit your palate quite hard, but mm -hmm. considering the strength of the gin, it's actually quite a smooth gin to drink. Mm, I love that gin. Oh my God, that is delicious. Yeah. And yeah, it's certainly got a little bit of that You can feel the heat. heat. Mm. Yeah. Mm. In gins, you get a lot of your citrus from the coriander, mm -hmm. but this one, um, these two, Anther and the Goddess, have got finger lime in them and they've got the, the lemon-scented gum. And that gives this beautiful soft citrus mm. and, the cor and the coriander gives a savouriness and then you get this beautiful bright citrus that comes through from the coriander. Mm. That is delicious. It's very delicious. I don't know, like, it's dangerously delicious at 58%. <laughs> I spoke about the cherry mm. a little bit earlier. I love this gin. Um, it's a soft, sweet gin. You can sip it. Um, and, you know, I often think of like a port when I, when mm -hmm. I drink that, sitting beside a fire, eating the cherry chocolates that you, you can get later when yeah. you make them again. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so yeah, I just, I love that gin as a, as a sipper. Um, and then, and then the, the tonic with it is phenomenal. Mm. Each of these gins change dramatically when you add tonic. And when you add, if you add any garnishes to a gin, mm. they'll also change the flavour of the gin and it'll pull out the citrus. If you add uh, citrus in there, if you put rosemary, it'll pull out the spice. So you, some people even put juniper into their gin and tonic and that just brings even more juniperiness mm. out. So it's really quite fun. Mm. Mm. After the break, I get a tour of the historical Federation Woolen Mills. <music> Distillery hand and cocktail whiz Joey has made us some of Anther's signature cocktails to drink while Derv shows me the original boiler house. Built in 1915, for over 100 years this room has been largely unchanged. Derv has some exciting plans to revitalise the space whilst honouring its history, and I'm getting a guided tour. So we're in the boiler house of the building, which mm -hmm. you are turning into a function? Yeah, is that right? well, a bar a and bar. restaurant. Mm -hmm. So um, this site, um, as you say, was the boiler, the boiler house and um, was did used to power the whole site. 105 years old and just gorgeous. It Tons of light. So beautiful, yeah. Yeah, we've got this huge window behind us here and you can see all the way along here there's light um, and we're basically going to be putting a bar just here mm -hmm. and the kitchen's in the back corner there and in here there's going to be some dining s settings. Um, but and you're preserving this sort of, this original this is aesthetic. It. We're yeah. leaving the walls, we're leaving Ford, GMH and Telstar on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> on the wall because this is part of the history of this area. Mm -hmm. this, this building fell, sort of slowly went out of service, or this site, the factory site, slowly went out of service over decades. Mm -hmm. So the businesses that were in here before you, there were a few, right? Well, there was the mills, yeah. um, and then we don't actually, we don't know, the, the, I don't actually know myself, I probably should know, but um, we can see from the walls, like you can see up here, this Ford GMH Telstar, yeah. that's going back a while, the yeah. old Telstar. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so there's obviously been car parts sort of dispensed from here, mm -hmm. um, but it was a woolen mill, an aura, um, a woolen mill, or, and they had made fabric here for ANSET when ANSET was around, so they, you know, this it's, it's very old. Um, it's and beautiful though. It is. Over here we're going to have 
basically couches, little booths, so we're going to have mm. chests to feel like couches facing one another and a little coffee table in the middle. It's sort of like a speakeasy kind of Yeah, vibe. it's mm. right. So we sort of, the vibe we're trying to um, evoke is as a speakeasy in a greenhouse. So it's sort of a little bit, you know, it'll be comfortable, you'll be able to get nice drinks. We really want to almost evoke the Roaring Twenties, yeah. <laughs> in a sense, because a hundred years ago, the world had gone through enormous amounts of pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. We've just come through it and I just want to, I just want to party. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone wants to get out and do it. So yeah. for us, we're like, that's what we want this space to be. Yeah. I've spent the day drinking and chatting with Derv and now I'm being put to work. Joey and I are about to make the Ramos Gin Fizz, a popular cocktail among bartenders and one of Joey's favourites to drink. But it involves some hard labour. It's not necessarily the favourite to make because uh, you have to shake it five minutes. Five minutes? <laughs> At the height of its popularity in the Roaring Twenties, mixing this cocktail took a production line of bartenders, passing the shaker along a queue of 20. Today, Joey is doing a variation on the classic using Anthers flagship gin and cherry gin, and I'll be her production line shaker. Mm -hmm. so it's The workout. So you just need your hands off. Uh huh. Just do that. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. You got this. Here you go. <laughs> I'm just doing the little key claps here. here Give go. me a beat. Good, Josh. Woo! <laughs> Five minutes of applause. I could do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you've got to shake it like you mean it, girl. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. The novelty's worn off now. <laughs> So you would do this for five minutes? Yeah, that we, is we should devotion. be okay for now. <laughs> yeah, now we have another round with the ice. Okay. <laughs> you guys can't see this because of the bar, but Joey started with a little kick. <laughs> oh, look at that. And I believe there are two here, so one cheers. For you, one for me, cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh yeah. Oh, we did very well. <laughs> Not a bad way to finish the day here at Anth the Gin in Geelong. Come for the chimney, stay for the delicious gin and extraordinary company. I'm not sure I'm ready to leave yet, but it might be time. Hello, it's me, the Gin Goblin. It's a Singapore sling with the cherry gin. It's really good. <laughs>